grasp, retrieve, figure eight, then cast again. Suddenly, a flash of brawn inches from your boat, line cutting deeply into your fingers as you try to stop the king of the lake from stealing a mass of feathers and flash that you spent hours making. This is why I tie flies for fish like muskie and pike. Today, we are gonna talk about a couple of different things that you need to consider if you're gonna start fly tying for big predatory fish. You have to consider the materials you're gonna use, the size of the flies you're gonna make, and the shapes of the flies you're gonna make. First, let's look at the materials that you need to start fly tying. So, the two biggest distinctions in fly tying for predators is natural materials like this bucktail, or synthetic materials, so made in a factory like this. Bucktail and other natural materials are staples of fly tying for a number of reasons. They are readily available, you can get them in great lengths and they have nice natural tapers because they came from a natural animal. They have, um, depending on the material you use, like this bucktail, it flares very nicely so you can make very unique shapes with it. Um, other ones like feathers have very interesting, can have very nice um, patterning and barring on them. But then others that some people like to use but I really don't, like rabbit, the hide actually absorbs water and makes the fly much heavier and almost impossible to cast. So I don't use um, a lot of rabbit, but I do use bucktail and feathers a lot. Another material, or another, the other category main is synthetic materials like this. This is synthetic yak. Um, it's actually the same as, pretty much the same as wig hair, so it, it's kind of <laughs> gross feeling. Um, but you can get it in much longer lengths than things like bucktail, but it doesn't have any flare, and it's also very slick, so it's very hard to secure to a hook with your thread. Um, my favorite material, though, for fly tying for muskies and pike is stuff like flash food. This stuff is very reflective, it has great motion in the water, and it just calls attention to your fly. The next consideration that you have to think about is the size. So here in my vise, I have a four-odd um, long shank hook. This is, a, I would say, on the small end of the kind of hook, the size hooks that I use. These are on the opposite end. This is an ADOT um, partridge hook. So these are very heavy wire, very strong hooks used for things like musky or even saltwater fish. So hooks are the platform of what you tie on. When you go to the next, um, when you tie on your material, you, it can only be so much longer than the hook you use. So this one could be about that fly can be about that long if you just use bucktail. Or flash, you can make it longer than that. But in order to extend the length of your hook, you can use things like these. These are articulation shanks, just a little looped piece of wire that you can go and put in the eye of the hook, and now you've got another, basically, buck hook off the end. The third thing that you have to consider when tying flies for muskies and pike is action and the shape of your fly. So I've got a couple of examples up here. Um, this one is has a very round head. I call these bulkheads. Um, they push a lot of water and they make the fly kind of do a walk the dog motion in the water. Otherwise, there's ones like this that are very streamlined that will just cut straight through the water. They're very easy to cast and small, but they don't push water in dingy situations when you want to get your fly noticed as much. Finally, because it's very difficult and time consuming to tie in a, um, to tie up here, uh, I did record myself tying so that you guys can see kind of what goes on. Unfortunately, it looks like my device was not properly installed. Hmm. There we go.
So I sped this up a lot. This was about a 12 minute tie, but it shows you um, attaching the thread. This is tying the first clump of bucktail. This is kind of putting it off the end to basically give you the length and support. Um, and then you have to secure it. So that's what I'm doing there. Instead of just a couple wraps with the thread, this actually helps keep it on the hook better. Attaching flash, which actually with this stuff, you want to cut it, taper it so you make all the ends uneven, and then um, fold it in half. But it's still a little bit too long of a video, so we can go to the front. And this is how I tie those um, bulkhead style ones, is starting here. So otherwise, everything is about the same, adding basically just layers of flash of, or of bucktail and flash until I get to the back or until I get to the front of the hook. And I, this is what I meant by flaring. You can crank down on it, and it'll expand. But if you guys want to pass these around, these are some of the flies that I. So that's the basic gist of tying flies for muskies or pike or other large predatory fish. Um, so today I showed you that fly fishing is not only for trout, but can be used to trick big predatory fish. Um, if you use the right materials, make, make them the flies the right size, and plan out the shape of your fly, you can make um, flies that will fool even the most wary of predators. I hope this has inspired you to give fly time and fly fishing a try. Thank you.